Good morning guys, Matt here for Game Planet. I am here with Paul Harris, who is senior producer, and Nick Tannehill, who is marketing manager. And this is a look at Stronghold Crusader 2. So, Nick is gonna uh, talk us through what's happening here and Paul has the reins. So, what are we looking at at the moment? So right now we're looking at a, a simple sort of one where you're on skirmish game uh, where Paul's playing as the Arabic Lord um, and he's fighting against Richard the Lionheart who's one of eight different AI characters uh, we're going to have in the game at launch. Um, as you can see Paul's got his castle economy and he's going over to Richard's now with the um, sort of you know his, his keep, his walls, his sort of you know granary stockpile, all the basic sort of elements that make up his castle economy and make up the sort of sim slash city builder aspects of the gameplay. Right, and we just saw him rotating the screen there. That's one of the new features of the game, of course, is exactly, the full, yeah. full 3D. Yeah, so, I mean, in the original game, you had sort of four viewpoints, which is uh, slightly restrictive when it comes to a, a modern 3D game. So we've got that, we've got zooming in as well, and you can zoom right in, check out all the sort of, you know, the sort of very detailed parts of the resource chains and um, you know the, the various sort of parts of your castle economy, um, and yeah, and it's it, you know it's not something that we just want to we don't want to want to update the old game with with new graphics. So you know, plenty of these things play into gameplay. There's like a physics system for the walls, um, and you know there's lighting um, which affects you know different um, you know uh, ambient things for times of day and and and. and sort of, you know, um, those kind of atmospheric things for multiplayer games. Um, but yeah, it's, it's kind of like a, it's a very sort of modern um, looking Stronghold game and hopefully one that um, runs really smoothly as well. Excellent. So uh, what's, what's Paul up to at the moment? So Paul's just getting his economy set up. Um, the main sort of strategy in a Stronghold game and the most reliable one is to build up your castle economy and get that really rock solid before you sort of do any attacking because the, the Stronghold series is kind of a mix between sort of sim, city builder and RTS. So you can't just go ahead and like zerg rush the opponent <laughs> straight away. Um, you kind of have to build up your economy, especially if you want to build Crusader troops, you have to build armor, you have to build weapons, and you have to get all that kind of stuff going before you you can sort of just you know steamroll the opponent um, and he's basically just getting his economy going making sure his resource chains are nice and effective um, and that's a big part of the gameplay just making sure your buildings are in the right places and making sure your supplies are, are nice and plentiful because a lot of you know castle sieges were won back in the day just through people cutting off supply chains and screwing up the economies so it's kind of true to life in that in that regard sure sure I'm, I'm pleased to hear that actually I used to play red alert and I couldn't find an answer just for the small <laughs> tank rush at the start of the game it was unstoppable <laughs> right, so uh, units wise, um, what does Paul have at his disposal that Richard doesn't? So um, the idea of the game is um, very much like the original Crusader to give uh, people access to both Crusader and Arabic troops. Um, you know, he, he's an Arabic Lord so his castle will look different, he'll have access to a few different structures like the high towers you can see on the right there that give um, sort of much longer range than Richard's sort of slightly more stumpy towers. Um, but the, the idea is to give people access to both um, Crusader troops which are recruited with a little bit of gold but mainly sort of weapons and armour so you need the resource chains to produce those um, as well as Arabic troops who are recruited to the mercenary camp and those guys you know they just require gold but um, they require quite a lot of gold so the idea is to give like access to both troop types and um, generally they're, they're sort of they're sort of uh, for different sort of situations really I mean Arabic troops can be recruited en masse if you kind of find yourself in a really bad spot and just need to sell all your resources really quickly and get a load of gold together um, but yeah it, it's very much like the original game that you have access to to all types of units which is interesting because it means that you can have you know up to 20 ish sort of you know different unit types in your army which is should be quite interesting really cool cool So as you can see, Richard sort of he sent out a little skirmish against Paul there. It's not really worked too well because Paul's stuffed his towers full of archers, which is a, a classic sort of stronghold strategy. And as you can see, there they're trying to sort of dismantle the wall, which is um, something we added in there because you know it, it wouldn't be very fun if, if only siege equipment could destroy walls and all your siege equipment is destroyed and you'd be basically stuck. But yeah, those guys aren't gonna, especially if Paul sets them on fire like that. Those guys aren't gonna get through anytime soon. Um, but it's kind of one of those things where we don't want players to be completely stuck, so we. Can kind of added in there as an option. Sure. Um, but it's not uh, an incredibly viable tactic, especially when you've got that many archers on the wall. Sort of a feeling out tactic if you will. Scout, yeah, scouting party exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The suicide mission. Knock, knock, knock down one, because you can see the walls are kind of layered, so they'll take quite a while to get through the, the various layers of wall. And you can you can fit, you know layer up walls as well if you want and create really thick ones that you can place loads of troops on top of it. So it's quite a good strategy to sort of, you know, 
rely on the siege equipment when it comes to taking down walls otherwise you're going to be um, pretty pretty done for. I mean there are other strategies as well there's there's units like the assassin um, who can cloak and actually scale castle walls and if you can get him on top of a gatehouse he can actually open up the gatehouse and sort of capture it and then oh, you can nice. sort of ride your cavalry through so we want to give people lots of options when it comes to you know breaking into a castle and uh, aside from just knocking down the wall for instance you can um, you can fire diseased animals from a trebuchet and spread disease throughout the castle Castle and you know, or oh, you can. It's delicious. Yeah, it's yeah. good stuff, right? And it's um, it's kind of like a Monty Python esque kind of thing we like to add into the game. Um, High five in your general direction. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we'd love to be able to use those lines. It's a shame we can't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, and, and you can, you know, you can also completely mess up their economy. That's another perfectly viable tactic for you know sieging a castle as well. So there's about three or four different ways you can sort of break into someone's um, break into someone's kingdom and you know ransack them. Yep. So All yeah, right. Paul's just setting up a few of the sort of traps now, um, pitch ditch is quite a good one, just in terms of the sort of fire, fire is quite a big aspect of the game, um, it spreads between buildings, so if you can manage to set a building on fire and it's close to something else it'll spread, um, and you know, Paul's just showing you a bit of the variety when it comes to castle defences, you know, there's you know, spike traps, um, you know, bollards, um, braziers if you want your archers to fire fire arrows from towers, um, we got uh, one of the new uh, features we've got is sort of these war dog cages, so you can sort of have these sort of rabid animals um, placed, um, you know, in the sort of general vicinity of your, of your, you know, outer area. And yeah. if the enemy gets near them, they'll kind of, you know, go rabid and start attacking them. But you don't want to go near them with your own troops because at the end of the day, they're they're crazy dogs, so they'll they'll attack you if you're not careful. They regard unto themselves. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. All right. So yeah, this is an example of a, I think a, a medium-sized map, but um, the game supports up to eight players, so there'll be, you know, a whole range from small to extra large, and um, just so we can fit in people. And if people want a really massive, you know, epic battle on a huge scale, they can go ahead and play on an extra large map and just have like two to four players and have lots of space between you, and you know, generally um, get that kind of feeling. And in terms of unit count as well, it'll scale according to how many players you have. So if you have eight players, the units will, the unit limit will be slightly reduced. But as soon as people start falling out that you know you get sort of higher unit counts unlocked and if it's one we want you can just have these massive or you know 2v2 you can have a fairly huge armies fighting against each other which is kind of like plays into the whole sort of old school RTS thing of just having loads of units yeah. on screen you know as possible. Yeah. Who doesn't love that? Exactly in the age of MOBAs right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what those unit count maximums are? Have you got kind of a book? Not at the moment I mean we're, we're about three months from release now so we're still kind of tweaking and um, playtesting but you know we're expecting it to be in the hundreds I think. Right fantastic. sending out the scouting party. So yeah, I mean, Richard's attack may not look much right now, but as soon as he places a um, siege camp down, Paul's going to be in trouble, because um, you've got this, there's this estate system in the game where you can place your sort of castle structures and your castle walls within a specific area, um, but the siege camp's quite unique in that you can place it outside your castle walls, outside your estate, um, and it's kind of like a forward base, so if you want to launch an attack from there, it's quite you know, easy, as long as there are no enemies nearby, you can place the siege camp you know, quite far forward and start generating catapults and stuff right there. Cool. So on a medium sized map like this, mm. um, how long should the average skirmish take, do you think? Um, I mean, this, this one's been taking us about um, 20 minutes, and even the, the guys at QA who've been playing the game repeatedly <laughs> over and over again are still taking about you know, 20 minutes to do it. So I right. think for this kind of map, maybe like one-on-one -on -one skirmish, about 20 minutes would be good, but you know, we've seen, you know, we purposely, did, uh, there we go, there's the, uh, hey, there's there's the, the doggies. There's, Paul just clicked the Get release the there. hounds button. <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, we normally try and design games for shows like this to be fairly short, just so we can fit it in the in the sort of in the slots and the meeting slots and stuff like that. But I mean, we designed one at, um, a show in the UK recently, and two kids managed to spend an hour playing on a small map, you know, one v one. So it's Isn't really that about truce the, yeah, well, disagreement. Well, I don't know actually. They they were pretty aggressive, but um, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's like it depends on who's playing really, like whether they want to tank, whether they want to turtle tank, you know, whatever, or they want yeah. to just go ahead and try and rush them, you know, oh, rush the enemy as so soon as possible. Speaking of rush, what's, what's coming in here? So this is um, Richard's sort of eventual, um, you know, siege attack, um, which is going to smash away Paul's walls, and those okay. archers aren't going to do very well because they're going to be knocked off the wall pretty quickly if they're, if they're not careful. Um, so yeah, I mean, like, the physics system is something that we kind of 
took our time with and you know because we're self-publishing the game we can decide how long we spend on a specific feature and you know how, how long we work on something and how much it's worth our, our, our time all those decisions are internal which is yep. nice um, and it's yeah we've spent quite a long time on the physics wall because you know put, like Paul's always saying that you know when you have demos of Havoc physics and stuff they always use some big destroyable buildings so castle walls and castles are pretty much made for Havoc physics I think and um, absolutely it's it, yeah it's turned out quite well for us I think Right, so, so Richard's managed to breach. Yep. <laughs> we should be really good at this demo by now. <laughs> but it, it's, it's great. I mean, it, it's good. It's good that the AI, you know, sometimes surprises us. And we want, you know, strong games are, are hard. You know, they're not they're not easy titles. So you know, we, we definitely want that to be part of the game. And absolutely, we want um, that kind of challenge um, to be in there. I mean, we, we're doing quite a lot to make the game accessible in terms of things like visual feedback cues so you know what's going on uh, you never sort of you know you never look back at your castle and find out it's completely destroyed there's lots of notifications that kind of thing so we're, we're, we're sort of balancing it and making it accessible in that regard but the difficulty will remain you know as it has always been a strong game quite and um, quite steep sure you have to um, pay attention quite a lot to the, to the game I mean Paul, yesterday Paul was doing um, Interviews at the same time as playing the game, which was a massive challenge. Um, Multitasking to the main. Exactly, yeah. 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 So you can just see Paul sort of doing the sort of simple drag and drop castle, you know, uh, wall building tool we've got in there. Yep. Which is, um, we, we did try um, before sort of any angle wall placement, any angle building placement, but it, it just it wasn't as you know smooth and didn't work quite as well as the sort of old school link it together eight directions um, and every, all the buildings are built on a grid system as well so it's it's kind of all about trying to get the sort of sensibilities of 2D gameplay into a 3D engine and you know because people keep saying to us oh make a new 2D stronghold we want a new 2D stronghold and we kind of we want to what we want to do is we want to achieve that in a 3D engine like that's our main goal really for Crusader 2 bringing the kind of the pace of the gameplay of the original titles and just you know the way it all just works and just locks in together and it's you know all fits in just making that you know something that we can achieve in a, in a 3D engine sure so Paul's built a, a forward siege camp now and he's amassing a pretty significant force um, so that's the trebuchet there. Um, and another thing we added, you know, the, during development, people kind of, you know, on the, on the Facebook page, on our forums, website, whatever, um, you know, come up with their own suggestions. And some of them are fantastic. Like, um, we, you know, we recently had people asking us to add engineers back on siege equipment. We did that. It was very easy for us to do. And we're quite happy to do it. And it just kind of adds a nice little layer of visual polish to the game that um, they wouldn't otherwise have. Cool, cool. Do, do you reach a point with that sort of thing? You mentioned you are self-publishing. Where, mm. uh, how do you draw the line? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I think Paul made quite a good point yesterday in that um, it's very difficult, um, sort of online, to sift through all the feedback and find the sort of real gold nuggets because some of the people that you know play our games know them absolutely inside out and have incredible you know insight into what kind of makes the games what they are. Um, yep. But then there's also if, if you just if you if you made you know every requested change that you ever saw on your Facebook page or your forums or whatever, the game just would be an absolute mess. So um, you kind of have to like sift through and you know pick out the really really good stuff and kind of make a call on it on on your own really. But um, no, it's been it, it definitely helps and things like early access and just you know not even games that do early access games that just kind of involve the community a bit when it comes to development and PC games have always done that you know it's, it's nothing new really to PC games and um, yeah. it, it's just really helpful when you can you can have people's feedback and you know if you can if you can if you have the resolve to <laughs> say no to some things and say yes to others then you know it can be really can be really beneficial to the development excellent so it looks like Paul is... Uh, Paul's moving in for the kill. Yeah. There's going to be some <laughs> destruction here soon, yeah. I think. Yeah, so you can see um, Richard sort of started to disable some of his uh, buildings outside of his castle because he knows that if he sends peasants out there, they're just going to get murdered. Um, and as Paul moves in, more and more of his buildings will be turned off. You can see the little Zs there. Yeah. Um, so you can you can sleep your industries. You know, If you want to sleep an entire industry, you can do that. If you want to sleep for specific buildings, you can do that um, as well. Um, and yeah, it's all about kind of you know repositioning your peasants because you can't control them. So your right. peasants are at your castle. Um, you know, if you recruit them into your army, they become soldiers. Um, you know, or if you build a new building, then they kind of move to that one. But you can turn off buildings and sort of save them from being slaughtered out yeah. in the wilds. <laughs> from leaming like death. Yeah, exactly. Um, 
Because the buildings have to be, um, the, the farm lands have to be built on this sort of green, fertile land outside of the, the arid desert sort of, you know, soil. So um, yeah. sometimes they're a bit more exposed than, you know, you might like them to be. So Paul's just going to show you some um, diseased animal Excellent. ammunition now. Yes. So you can see the lion, poor lion being dragged into the, um, into the trebuchet. <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> it's all right, he's dead. And then flung at great height and then... Oh, so brilliant. that sort of that disease cloud needs a little bit of work, but um, it's it's definitely something that you can yeah it's an alternative strategy if you want to spread disease throughout the castle rather than trying to blow a hole in the wall, um, or you can do both as Paul's doing here. Yeah. Um, yeah, and it's just about giving people some options and, and adding a bit of sort of Monty Python esque humour to the to the mix. Definitely. Um, and yeah, so essentially the, the goal of, of this particular skirmish match is to um, kill the enemy lord. Um, right. Which will be, you know, the goal in, in quite a, quite a lot of games, um, you know, different modes. Be it the campaign, multiplayer, um, skirmish mode, and stuff like that. So as you can see, he's in there in the tower. Yeah, he, he's pretty heavily defended up there on the keep. The keep is your sort of central um, central building and your, um, you know, your the heart of your heart of your stronghold, really. Yeah. So you can see the fire there on the left hand side, spreading between different buildings. I think they might have um, put it out with a well. Um, but um, yeah, if you can manage to set one building on fire and the enemy doesn't have any wells nearby, they can, you can quite easily um, burn a hole in, in a, a pretty large part of their pretty large part of their castle. Oh. <clears throat> yeah, there's no Assassin's Creed style waiting for one-on-one -on -one combat in, in Stronghold. It's just a <laughs> big melee. <laughs> it's nice and messy the way it should be. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, so you can see Richard's castle is obviously quite tightly packed, but um, you can build however you want, really. I mean, we've just set these up purely for the demo. And, sure. And so, so what options does he have? Is he able to take control of his lord there? And oh yeah, flee? absolutely. Yeah, the, the, lord, the lord is a unit in his own right. So um, if, if you want to, if you want to send the lord out and to his death, you're you're welcome to do that. <laughs> I believe he just fought me. That's embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> Him. There we go. So Paul send in the sort of Templar Knights there, which are one of the game's most um, powerful units, but they're also quite expensive. No, it's a disaster. <laughs> the Lord is quite a, a strong unit, just because if we make him quite weak, it, it'll be a bit difficult to, um, you know, for him to be a bit too overpowered. I think. Yeah, yeah. Take him out with a diseased animal. Yeah, exactly. That'd be awesome. That might take a little bit long for this demo, though. <laughs> for him to get bedridden and then eventually <laughs> die. <laughs> yeah, go on, Paul, just... All right, so that one didn't quite work, although... Oh, I might, I might speed it up. Paul's going to send a follow-up okay. attack. So what are we looking at here? What's coming through? So Paul's just going to try and take out one of the towers, because towers are, the, are a big problem for any attacking force, because any archers stationed up there will be much better protected than they would otherwise be, they'll have longer range. If you put a brazier at the top of the tower, they can fire fire arrows, so that's quite effective against siege equipment. So Paul's just trying to take out as many of the towers as possible. And that's Generally speaking, that's a pretty good strategy when it comes to um, you know attacking the enemy, just because those towers are the ones that will take out your ground troops, just you know because they're so far away, and it's, it's so difficult for troops on the ground to kill troops in the towers so that you really have to use siege equipment to take out the structure itself and right excellent so i think paul's finally gonna back at the base of the keep yeah charging in <laughs> get in there fellas i think richard's down there on the right <laughs> hey Whoa. So in this there particular demo, all the buildings vanish when it finishes. But um, Richard hit the self-destruct button. Self <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> exactly. Brilliant. So right. 25 minutes victory. So yeah, I mean that's that's kind of an idea of how long an average skirmish game would last. But it's very much up to the player. If they're going to tank and turtle, then it could take far longer than that. Right. Excellent. All right. Well, thank you very much for talking us through sure. that. Thank You're you very Paul. welcome. <laughs> That's excellent. Is there anything else you'd like to add before we um, chop this? The game comes out on 2nd September this year. Yeah. Um, and yeah, I mean, it'll be exclusive to Steam uh, just because we're a very small team. So being on Steam allows us to have all the multiplayer stuff sorted out for us. Um, but yeah, it was going to come out on 2nd September. And um, yeah, I hope people really enjoy the game. We're, we're, we're really, um, really satisfied with how it's turned out. and. 
really enjoying playing it in the office so that's a, it's a good sign that is a good sign yeah. all right thanks heaps guys cool thanks so much